This isn't working. Yep, gonna need to do something about that. I need a router slide. Hello and welcome to this episode from Range Woodworking, where today, as that Academy Award winning acting would suggest, I'm making a router sled. Whilst I cut the various pieces up on the table saw, I'll quickly talk about why a router sled might benefit you. You might be saying, but I have a thicknesser, why would I need a router sled? And simply put, they do two very different jobs. A thicknesser will give you two parallel faces, so it won't remove any cupping or warping in a board. So you might be inclined to use a jig to mill timber, like any of the other milling timber without a jointer videos. But if you have something too big, like a slab, or too dangerous, like an incredibly hard end grain chopping board, then a router sled is probably your best option. Now we have our parts, I'm going to use a combination of 5 minute epoxy and screws to build this as form ply doesn't really stick to anything. So first things first, I'll stick these pieces together that form the upright sled supports before following up with the screws. Now it's worth noting that a router flattening sled needs to be, well, flat. So I spend a bit of time and use clamps to ensure these pieces line up perfectly, giving a nice flat edge on top. You might notice that one support has two unequal pieces. This will become clear later. Once glued and screwed together, I apply some more epoxy and attach these uprights to the bases. These will give the piece something to butt against and for me to clamp to my workbench to keep everything in place. And now is probably a pretty good time to check that the router base actually fits on what will be the base of the sled. You want it to be a snug fit, but not so snug that it doesn't move freely, but snug enough that it only moves forwards and backwards. I use a marking gauge to measure the size of the base plate and score along my base to cut out somewhere for the bit to do its thing. The surfacing bit I'm going to use is huge, so I'm giving it as much space as possible on the base of the sled to work with. I'll use a Forstner bit in the corners to give a nice radius edge and it allows me to start the jigsaw from somewhere. And the good thing about using that marking gauge to score the edges is that it scores that phenolic coating on the form ply so it doesn't give me a heap of chip out and tear out. Slow and steady, nice and straight. Now this piece will be the backstop to prevent me running the router into the base supports. And this forms the adjustable aspect of the router sled, so I roughly guess what the minimum size thing I'm likely to flatten will be. I then drill through my piece and use the same size drill bit to keep everything in line and a square to keep it square. The marking gauge is back at work to mark for a channel for the backstop to slide in before the jigsaw gets involved again, but I'm sure you can imagine what that looks like. To mark for the holes in the other piece, I clamp the pieces together and drill through the first set. These will hold some bolts, so I drill a recess with another force in a bit before applying a little dab of super glue and installing the bolts.
and some satisfying hammering sets the bolts nice and flush with the surface. Once I pop the bolts through, you can see how the stop can slide to accommodate whatever's being flattened. Now, the front end of the sled has a guide to keep the sled square to the piece and stop it sliding off the supports and potentially gouging or damaging whatever's being flattened. The first piece is just stuck on with some super glue using an offcut to keep it flush with the front edge before being secured with one of the 8,000 screws used in the construction of this. The second piece is installed the same way, and as you can see here, it sits on that lower rail to track along it. You can see I used some blue tape stuck on that second piece to give a minute gap to stop it binding to the track, uh, but this wasn't actually necessary as form ply is plenty slippery enough. The last step is to glue and screw on all the side pieces. I'm just using regular ply for this because it doesn't need to slide on anything and I'm cheap. Oh, nearly dropped it. I'm just using some more offcuts to keep these side pieces flush with the bottom edge of the base. And that's it, quick and easy. Time to take it for a spin, or a slide, or a sled. I don't know which, what the uh, appropriate verbiage is. I've put a flat reference material underneath everything, and then I clamp the near side support to the workbench. I grab a chopping board and butt it up against the front edge before butting the other support against that. I add some more clamps and adjust the back support and with a big breath of trepidation it's time to take this 260 gram piece of steel and carbide and spin it at 18,000 rpm. Once secured in the router I quickly add a bit of hot glue to make sure the board isn't going anywhere and then I set my depth. Depending on what you're flattening, how uneven it is, and how sharp your bit is, you might need to do multiple passes to get one uniform level. Fortunately, these boards are relatively close to flat, so I find the lowest corner and set my depth, and it's time to go. And it works. I might have to look at how to incorporate a dust boot or improve dust collection, but it does work. Unfortunately, it makes a dusty, dusty mess, which makes this shot less dramatic than I'd hoped. But hey, once it's done, only 13 more boards to go. Thanks for watching this episode from Range Woodworking. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, please consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, take it easy. I suppose I've got to clean all this up now. <laughs> <laughs>